In this week's market update, Tory lead narrows ahead of next week's election, British Airways under pressure and China's credit rating downgraded. With just over a week till we go to the polls, the general election is dominating the news headlines. On Monday evening, Prime Minister Theresa May and opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn faced a live TV audience in an election debate shown on Channel 4 and Sky News. Theresa May was pressed on her numerous U-turns and Jeremy Corbyn confronted on his past views on defence. The Labour leader appeared quite relaxed, especially when answering questions from the audience, while Theresa May looked tense at times. She was heckled when she refused to give details on how many pensioners would lose their winter fuel allowance or what the cap on social care payments would be. A YouGov poll published in Wednesday's Times suggests the Conservatives could fail to win an outright majority, which could mean a hung parliament. The data suggests the Tories could lose up to 20 of the 330 seats they held in the last parliament, with Labour gaining nearly 30 seats. The Conservatives would still be the biggest party, but would not have an overall majority. At the start of the campaign, some polls had the Tories at almost double the vote share of the Labour Party, indicating that the most likely outcome would be a landslide victory for the Prime Minister. However, according to the Daily Telegraph's poll tracker, May's lead has dropped from 17.8 points to below 10 since the snap election was called on the 18th of April. The pound, which fell dramatically last June after the referendum, has been rallying against the dollar since the election was called, on hopes that Theresa May would have a strong hand in Brexit negotiations with a Tory majority in Parliament. However, in the past week, election uncertainty has caused it to weaken. For investors, elections mean uncertainty, and as we're often reminded, markets don't like uncertainty. So we can expect some volatility this week with the pound. If there's one thing we've learned from the 2015 election, the EU referendum, and more recently the US presidential election, opinion polls need to be treated with caution, and anything can happen in this final week as the undecided make their final decision. In other news, British Airways is under pressure to explain the source of the power surge that caused its computer systems to fail over the bank holiday weekend, leaving 75,000 passengers stranded around the world. Shares in parent group IAG were down 4% when the markets opened on Tuesday, recovering during the day to close at a 1.4% fall compared to Friday's closing price. Analysts have estimated the BA disaster, which forced the airline to cancel all flights out of London on Saturday, could cost the company as much as 100 million euros. The company has undertaken many cost-saving initiatives recently, including the outsourcing of several hundred IT jobs to India's Tata Consultancy Services. However, BA has strongly denied any links between the computer crash and the outsourcing move, blaming the IT failure on an exceptional power surge. Meanwhile, rival airline Ryanair released its latest results on Tuesday, reporting its fares had fallen 13% in the year to 31st of March and would drop a further 5-7% to this year due to the weakness in sterling and excess capacity in the European airline industry. With inflation rising in the UK faster than wages, it's a challenging time for airlines as consumers feel the squeeze and are in search of a bargain, especially with discretionary purchases like holidays. In this kind of environment, keeping costs down is vital, and Ryanair have been able to cut overall costs by 5%, despite a 13% jump in passenger numbers to 120 million. The company also cited difficult trading conditions caused by other factors. These included security incidents at European cities, a switch of charter capacity from North Africa, Turkey and Egypt to mainland Europe, and a sharp decline in sterling following the European referendum last year. Elsewhere, fears that slowing growth and rising debts will weaken the world's second largest economy has led to China's credit rating being downgraded by Moody's for the first time in almost 30 years. The agency lowered China's sovereign debt rating by one notch to A1 from AA3, putting it in the same category as countries such as Japan and Israel. This means that while China's debt is still investment grade, analysts believe there is a higher chance of the country defaulting on its debt obligations, the agency also downgraded the rating on Hong Kong, citing its close linkages to the broader Chinese economy. Closer to home, figures out on Wednesday will give some clues on the state of the UK economy. The British Retail Consortium Shop Price Index and Bank of England Consumer Credit Figures will give investors an idea of how the cheaper pound is affecting UK consumers. In April, the British Retail Consortium Index was 0.5% lower than last year, suggesting retailers were reluctant to pass on higher costs 
due to fears of losing market share. Bank of England consumer credit figures will reflect how consumers responded to lower purchasing power in April. Analysts expect mortgage approvals and consumer borrowing to remain at about the same level as last month, despite a recent survey from the bank suggesting lending conditions tightened for the first time in six years during the first three months of 2017. On Thursday, all eyes will be on the latest manufacturing PMI figures. PMI stands for Purchasing Managers Index and is an indicator of the economic health of the manufacturing sectors based on various indicators such as new orders and inventory levels. Last month's figures showed UK manufacturing expanded at its fastest rate for three years during April. The PMI figure for April rebounded to 57.3 from a four-month low of 54.2 in March. Any reading above 50 indicates growth in the sector and the survey has now recorded nine consecutive months of expansion. The weak pound has been a boost to UK manufacturers exporting goods overseas, making our prices attractive to foreign buyers. However, this has the opposite effect for those UK manufacturers requiring imported components, many of which are being forced to absorb the higher prices and not pass them on to their customers. And finally, in the US, the major focus this week will be the release of the May non-farm payrolls report this Friday lunchtime. This comes at a time when some economists have started to argue that recent economic data does not justify a rate rise in June. The unemployment rate in the US is forecast to remain steady at 4.4%, while wage growth is also expected to have eased, with average hourly earnings to increase 2.6% from a year ago. The consensus view remains that the Federal Reserve will raise US interest rates at its June meeting. This is a further sign the US economy is getting back to normal and continues to lead the post-crisis recovery in world markets.